Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. You know, don't you? You know. Because that's why you've tuned in. Right. Just going to go through a few things today and uh, we're going to touch on a few things that's in media at the moment. Dylan White, a.k.a. The Body Snatcher, a.k.a. The Can't Man. Anybody who wants it can't get it. A bit like John Fury, really, isn't it? He? Fighting man that don't fight anyone. Right. Povetkin. Without Povetkin at the moment, what is Dylan White? He's just a spare part, isn't he, really, without Povetkin? He needs that Povetkin so he can keep shouting about how much of a victim he is with the system and... I'm not happy with the WBC and blah de blah. Listen, Dylan White, if you don't like the WBC, move on to another sanctioning body. It's no good being wrapped around the WBC if you know you're going to be squeezed out. You've already knocked back fight with Joshua in a rematch at Wembley, only for four belts at Wembley, 90,000 fans. In a in a in an intense beef raw raw chicken or whatever you want to call it laughing luncheon meat hashtag job fight. You know there's two blood two London lads going at it north and south and you knocked it back. So where's Dylan White heading? I mean, he's down for his sixth pay per view next. He's not even fought for a European title. Never mind a world title, which is not back. He's not back Luis Ortiz, he's not back Wilder, he's not back Brazil, you know, but yet he's calling them out now. He's not back Debar, but yet he were having a pop at Debar when Joyce beat him the other day, but he, he didn't want to get in with Joyce and he didn't even dream about Joe, Joe, Joe Joyce. You know, we're 18 months on now from Dylan White's B sample that we're still waiting for. He's already got a two-year drug ban behind him. He had a two-year ban. You know, where is his career heading now? He's waiting for a man to say whether he's going to fight him or not. Who's in his 42nd year. Oh, my God. Is it going to be White against Pulef like we're hearing? Or is it going to be Parker against White rematch or the Chisora rubber match trilogy? I don't know, but I think Dylan White and his team have played a blinder. You've not fought for a European title and they're going for the sixth pay-per-view next. So, who's his best win? I don't know. You'd probably have to say Parker, but that were life and death. So, Dylan White could be heading into the summer for his seventh pay-per-view, having him just beat Povetkin in a rematch that could have been a life and death. Now, he could be heading for, like I said, his seventh pay-per-view and not having fought for a European or a world title. So I just think he's a joker. So he's surrounded by jokers. So, But good luck to him. You know, he's going to make most of a bad job, but very, very limited fighter. If he had, a, if he had any balls, he'd have a fight with Yui Fury, wouldn't he? They'd get schooled. So anyway, moving on, Fury Joshua. Well, Tyson Fury were on Jonathan Ross, won it the other night. Fantastic self-promoter like Eddie Earn. However, in my opinion, he's 10 months inactive. Yet again, inactive period for him. And he's still not defended a belt yet as a boxer. And I think he's defended a Commonwealth once, but you know he's not defended a world title yet. We keep hearing he's a GOAT. Well... <laughs> Got two two decent wins on his record. Clitch go on Wilder. One were too old. And one, one were all right and but they were the best of their era and Fury defeated him in the back gardens. One a ten year champion, one a five year champion. It's the poorest era we've ever had in fifty year, in my opinion, maybe sixty year. It's that poor. It's shocking that Fury can come back and 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 reign after after uh, being out years. 
So we're in a very, very poor era. era. But he's 10 months hard at ring now and he's locked in a legal dispute with uh, Aram and Bob and Al Heyman and Bob Aram and ESPN and God knows what's going on. Frank Warren, old, a.k.a. Bricktop, he's got he, he's got himself in mix, but he cancelled Caballero fight against Fury So on December 5th, so it must be serious. So Tyson Fury is in a legal dispute, so I don't want to see you on, him on Jonathan Ross going on about Joshua. He knows that fight's not going to happen next year. You know, wasn't he on Jonathan Ross uh, last year talking about the same thing? It, we're going around in circles with these people self-promoting themselves, aren't we? I want to see boxers when they've got fights. I don't want to see them overdoing it on internet or on TV. When you want to fight, I want to see you on telly. Till then, I don't want to see you. If you know fight lined up and, you, and you're going to call, that's no good. It's like football. Jurgen Klopp didn't want to see injured players. He didn't want them near him. They're no good to him unless they're fit. And playing now, boxers are no good to fans or promoters if they're uh, if they're not fighting. So Tyson, put a sock in it and come on TV when you've got a fight lined up. You're ten months out at ring, and I've been told it could be another ten months before it's all sorted. Eddie Earn going on about all this. Joshua will bin will bin his belts, and Fury will bin the belts. He don't know that, but. What, what do I think about winning these belts? Well, this is how I look at it. I thought all roads led, led to disputed, undisputed, sorry, for uh, Eddie Earn and Joshua. The road to undisputed, well, this is how I look at it. If they've been the belts, it's not going to be undisputed, is it? But the belts are Tyson Fury's, aren't they? So, so Joshua's a paper champion. But uh, Joshua against Usek terrifies Eddie Hearn. Joshua against Joyce terrifies Eddie Hearn. So that's just my opinion. I don't think you're going to see them fights with Joshua. Who's the top six out there at the moment? You have to say Fury number one, uh, Joshua number two, Usek number three, Joe Joyce number four, Povetkin number five, You'd have to say that that's the top five at the moment. Uh, I don't know. It's Fury, Joshua, Wilder. Wilder's in there as well. You know, he, he, he's in a bad he's in a bad way though, isn't he? So Fury, Joshua, Usyk, Joyce, Wilder, and Povetkin. They're my top six. Is there any room for Dylan White in the top six? No, I think Dylan White is now a gatekeeper like Derek Chisora. They're going to have to fight each other to see who can be a premier gatekeeper because that, that's, where, that's where we're at with heavyweight division. Don't any gimps from Gimpel Island or anybody from the Bean Masons or Match Room FC tell me heavyweight division's booming. It is. And we've got Usek as probably number three in division after two fights in heavyweight division and non-title fights. So that's where we're at with the, the heavyweight division. Moving on to Callum Smith. What next for Callum Smith? Well, he got beat last night. Uh, we're really saying he struggled at the weight and that. Uh, in my opinion, I don't agree. We were told he does the weight easy by his trainer, Eddie Earn and all his brothers and people around him. So... He's made all the check weights. He's never failed a check weight. So if you're not failing check weights, you do the weight easy, don't you? So I don't think you can give that as an excuse. But what what excuse Callum Smith can give is this. He had a torn bicep in round six, right? Left bicep. And he took the fight at 32, to th 32 days notice. Now, he was already fitting in gym anyway, but Canelo's had a 10-week camp for that. They can't keep calling up fighters, offering them paydays and giving them 32 days notice or inventing catch weights. And there's, there's a lot of stuff goes on goes, goes on around Canelo, in my opinion. But there's no doubting that he is 
up there as probably the pound for pound best. So Callum Smith, there's no shame in losing to a pound for pound best. And I think that Joe Gallagher has to be given a bit of credit here. I've given Joe Gallagher loads of stick over years. I didn't like him leaving Marcus Morrison in ring too long and he got flogged. I didn't like the fact that he were vocal about the Linares rematch for Crawler and that he got Crawler a pay-per-view fight against Lomachenko. Fair enough, he got into manager position. But let's have it right. Crawler was struggling at English level a few years ago before somebody clunked him on Ed Wantley in a burglary. So what Joe Gallagher's done with him is fantastic. He gets fighters into position without him getting miles on clock. Beefy Smith picked up a an easy WBO belt didn't he uh, so did Crawler he got a WBA belt uh, pretty easy Quig got one didn't he he got upgraded didn't he and then he drew the fight and held the ring held the belt in the ring on the night all cringy stuff but you have to give Joe Gallagher credit for getting his men in there I'll give him credit it's a boxing's a business I try not to look at it as a, fa- as a fan no more I try to give people benefit of doubt it's a new leaf I'm trying to turn over but there's that much rubbish spoke in boxing. It's unbelievable to sift through the rubbish uh, and through what's right and what isn't. Uh, Joe Gallagher's got Callum Smith to the promised land and in big money fights in the WBSS and he's got him to the, to, to the Canelo fight. He got Beefy Smith, the WBO belt. He got him the Canelo fight. He got Kola Lomachenko fight on pay-per-view. And I'm hearing that Joe's tipping Callum Johnson to fight Canelo. So is that a good fight? Yeah, I'd like to see that fight at 175. If he can drop Beta Beef or Beterbia, whatever they call him, I'm sure he can uh, drop Canelo. But it is what it is. I don't see Canelo calling out Beterbia. So I'd like to see that fight. Uh, but I feel sorry for Callum in a way. It's not nice as torn bicep injury, I've been told. He came up against an elite guy in Canelo, though. He went the distance, and there's no shame in that. It's, like I said, a torn bicep from round six onwards. He got paid millions. He took the challenge up. He dared to be great, where, whereas other people, their arseholes fell out. Uh, but I'd like to see Callum Smith rested now and maybe come back in August, September and fight John Ryder, who, who won this weekend against somebody called Guy, a 12-5-1 and one guy. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders versus Callum Smith is another great fight but will Billy be inactive another year we can't hang our hat can we on Billy Joe Saunders we've heard it all before haven't we you know for five years he's been calling out Canelo Triple G and he hasn't stepped up has he so I don't want to hear any Billy Joe Saunders chat until he's more active Billy Joe Saunders against Jacobs and Andrade won't do for me it, it, it's got to be Triple G and Canelo or Chris Eubank all at 168. Or 160 if he can do that. But he's got to fight Triple G, Canelo and Eubank Jr., I think. And maybe rematch John Ryder as well. There are four fights I could get up for for Billy Joe Saunders. John Ryder, Eubank, Triple G and Canelo. I'd like to see Callum Johnson fight with Turby. I'd also like to see Natasha Jonas fight Terry Harper. And I'd like Steffi Bull to come off Twitter and do a statement like he did in that Eddie Earn interview where he admitted that uh, on the Eddie Earn Sky thing, uh, before Harper Jonas, Steffi Bull admitted that he's been running Terry Harper's Twitter for a year. Well, I'd like Terry Harper to come out and be herself and start tweeting for herself and doing interviews because it's manufactured rubbish. They're not fighting anybody. They're fighting school dinner ladies. Terry Harper should really be ashamed of what she's doing, but I can understand that. Why? Because she's not very good. Uh, they've developed a style for her where she stays on outside and don't get hit. And, and in a two-minute round where you're running, it's not exciting for fans. Natasha Jonas is exciting, and I don't think the boxing fans are going to get behind Terry Harper until she rematches. Natasha Jonas doesn't wait for her to get to 40 because what is she, 37 next? So, but I want to see Natasha Jonas against Terry Harper. I think it's a great fight. It's a Sky headliner or a chief support on pay-per-view. Liam Smith, I want to see him in some fights as well. 
Liam Smith and John Ryder, if they're not happy with Eddie Earn, they need to leave. They don't have contracts with him. Hit the road if you're not happy. What money you've had off Eddie, consider it severance pay, take the train, get out of Dodge. If you're not happy, too many fighters nowadays, they seem to get stuck in a rut with Eddie Earn and they don't want to leave, they get parked up. For the simple reason that Eddie fills them full of rubbish about horror stories, about Bricktop. He's the only other game in town, and if they go there, they'll get messed about, blah, blah, blah. But Eddie's signing fighters and just parking them up. So Frank can't have them. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Which brings me to people who have many opinions. I'm going to give you the rimming dozen. The rimming dozen. What do you think to that? Major, major, major people who work in the media who rim everything Sky and everything matchroom. Here's the dirty dozen, or should we say the rimming dozen, to finish off. Gareth A. Davis, a.k.a. Matchroom Sky and the zone new rimmer. David Diamante, rimmer. Michael Buffer, you rimmer. Coogan Cassius, you rimmer. Michelle Joy Phelps, major rimmer. Rob Tebber, major rimmer. Darren Barker, major rimmer. Spencer Oliver, rimmer. Bean, runner bean, could have been, should have been, never been. Bake bean, creepy bean. Beanie, rumple stilt skin. We're on to you. Added spice, sizzling. I don't know what to call him from now on, but Adam Smith, you are a major, major Sky Sports and Matchroom Rimmer. Go seek help and have that laptop in. Johnny Nelson, there's no words to describe what I feel about you. You're the biggest company man ever. We all know you all why we all know why you're at Sky, don't we? So Tony Bellew, another one, you need to seek help. It's embarrassing how you carry on. And Anna Woolhouse. Oh my God. How does she hold her job down with all that rimming she does around Joshua? She should be embarrassed. It's now become a bit of a joke now. All these people rimming people and trying to have their own agendas. It's bloody shocking. So best thing they could do is give Dave Allen a job on Sky and let him just say what he wants and tell it as it is because I don't think Dave's all that bothered. Uh, Because all them lot there, they just don't say a word, but it is what it is. That's about it, really. Uh, I'm having a few tech issues at the moment, so we might just have to stick a video out with a blank screen, or we'll probably get some, we'll probably stick a picture up on it. But no worries. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Shout out to my sponsors. You know who they are. Peace out.